All right, so it's time to take a look at what the headlines on some major dailies are saying. And I'll be beginning with Daily Independent this morning. Daily Independent leads with only capital boost may stop 100,000 naira to the dollar exchange rate. And that's according to analysts uh, on the Daily Independent. It's a special report there. Uh, Kano gets first female chief judge as assembly confirms Aboki. You find details of that one on page six. Tinubu sets aside Buhari's tax policies to grow businesses. The riders there suspends 5% excise tax on telecoms services, import tax adjustment levy on certain vehicles, defers execution of Finance Act customs tariff. Then on the lowest strip there, you have ignore rumors on ministerial list. Presidency urges Nigerians. You have details of that on page 29. Above the masthead, you have Nigeria records 798 diphtheria cases and 80 deaths. Right beside it, you have Abba Kiari remains in custody despite court admitting him to 50 million naira bill. All right, so that's the much I'll be taking from the Daily Independent newspaper. From that, we move over to Business Day. And Business Day is leading with Tinubu Easy's throttle on taxes, charges on vehicles, beers, phone calls others on hold it's a major headline this morning there's a second newspaper that's headlining this and then from that you have naira windfall for oil firms at cbn lifts dollar restrictions that's on the masthead of the business day newspaper And why banks' bad loans declined to seven-year low. Those are the three headlines on the front page of Business Day newspaper. And from Business Day, we'll move over to the Guardian newspaper, which leads with advocacy for pay on death law heightens as unclaimed funds near 1.3 trillion naira. It's their big story, and it's on pages four and five. Advocacy for pay on death law heightens as unclaimed funds near 1.3 trillion naira. Temporary relief as Tinubu defers suspends Buhari's 11th hour tax drive. That's the way this has been captioned by The Guardian. And then moving forward above the masthead, you have fuel subsidy. Doctors want 550% salary increase, threatening strike July 19th. And right beside that, you have Nigeria's 33 trillion Naira stock market undervalued, trading at discount. And go back down again on the Guardian newspaper, just going back and forth there with so many things that, you know, just cannot be ignored on the face of the Guardian newspaper. I have asset declaration, court grants Abakiari 50 million Naira bill. You have Kano Anti-Graft Agency invites Ganduje for questioning. All right, that's the much we'll be taking from the Guardian newspaper. From there, we'll move over to Nature News. Nature News is raising the alarm. Imminent flood. Senate urges federal government to construct dams, mitigate risks. Page three is where you have details of that. The rider there, Nima issues fresh warnings of impending heavy rainfall. Uh, some newspapers captured captured this yesterday on their front pages. Gas flaring surge in Nigeria as oil output increases. It's 
It started on the front page but continues on page three on Nature News. President Tinubu suspensions President Tinubu's suspension of plastic tax raises concerns over environmental impact. Page 5 is where details of that is. Well, Oshun Governor distributes 332 pumping machines to address water shortage crisis. Page 11 is where you have details of that. Expectedly, Nature News will carry stories on nature, uh, safety for the environment. That's why I have anxiety as Ajib gas pipeline leaks in Delta community. Page 6 is where you have details of that. Okay, nature care. What are they talking about today on nature care? Healthy weight management habits. If you want to watch your weight, you want to know how to manage your weight and have healthy weight, uh, go to page 15 of Nature News to get details on how you can keep a healthy weight. All right, so our analyst is standing by and it's time to unveil him. I'm talking about our Friday analyst, Mr. G.D. Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of journalism. He's joining us from Lagos here. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Johnson. Good morning. Actually, I'm joining you from Kaduna. Whoa, you traveled. Um, it's a pleasure. Yeah, I'm in Kaduna for a program. So, good morning to our viewers. Good all morning. Over in Nigeria, and good, good day to our viewers all over the world, depending on your time zone. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be with you. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. What, what's, what's the weather like in Kaduna this morning? Uh, very interesting. It's, 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 it's quite calm. Uh, the atmosphere is cool and it seems it's going to rain later in the day, but the atmosphere is cool. Okay. Well, I've not forgotten that uh, I gave you a chief dance title last Friday. So, okay. chief, I'm going to go back to it. Chief, you've heard me. <laughs> you heard the headlines this morning. Um, so, I, I think we should start with this one that's been captured on almost all the front pages this morning. Tinubu sets aside Buhari's tax policies to grow businesses. And I'm taking this one from the Daily Independent. The riders there suspend 5% excise tax on telecom services, <coughs> import tax adjustment levy on certain vehicles, and defers execution of Finance Act, customs tariff. Let's start with this. Well, um, what the president has done is just to delay the implementation of these policies and put in place towards the tail end of the Buhari's administration. Uh, at the end of the day, by September, I think the status will come in effect. Mm. The, 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 I think the thinking behind the president suspending this is one, the effect of the removal of subsidy and the consequent effect on, on, on the uh, disposable income of every Nigerian and then the double digit spiraling inflation that we are witnessing because that has become pretty difficult for an every Nigerian to survive since the inception of this administration as a result of the removal of subsidy and the inability of um, government to come up with immediate palliative measures to, to ameliorate the effect of the removal of subsidy because you know, Nigeria is a monoproduct economy. The entire economy of Nigeria is, 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 is dependent on oil, dependent on oil for our transportation, dependent on oil for the running of our businesses, most small and medium scale enterprise run on fuel. So that itself added to the overhead cost, which invariably affect their return on investment and their bottom line. So what the government has done is to see whether in the next Three months, there will be a genie. The last quarter of 2023, probably there will be some cushioning effect that will have been put into the economy before government begins to draw this, this, these various taxes. What I disagree with is the way the newspaper are framed, are framed this story. Because, Tinumbu, because it does sound taxes. okay. Tinumbu, taxes, and the media should 
should have gone beyond this primordial sentiment and, and set the record straight, uh, particularly the print media, uh, which in most cases set the agenda for others to follow. Why, why, why liberal the taxes and Tinumbu Buhari taxes? And then, besides, all of this problem could be so executive order, like I tell people, uh, like I also know executive order are just lazy approach to governance. Lazy approach to governance in the sense that um, if, it, if another president comes in, it could render your executive order useless. Or if you have stakeholders going to court challenging those orders, the Supreme Court might rule that the president does not have the power to do what he has done. You see what happened in America uh, with the student loan. And so the, the easiest way to public policy is for you to come up with laws, enabling laws, pass the bill with respect to that. So what? The Tinubu administration has done is to score a quick political gains with with the Nigerian people that when we understand your suffering, we understand the challenges you are facing. This body that was imposed towards the tail end of Buhari's administration, we are going to suspend it, but at a little at a later point in time, we introduce this this policy back. Yeah, so rejoice with caution. <laughs> In other words, yeah, rejoice just, with caution. Just wait, just wait till September. <laughs> All right, so um, let's move on now. Still on the Daily Independent, only capital boost may stop 1,000 naira to the dollar exchange rate, and that's from analysts. Yeah, you know, when the president came up with his policy statement, with respect to the unified foreign exchange market and um, that the whole place will be the whole place will be open up the whole place will be open up that uh, the forces of the market will determine the forces of the market will determine um, exchange rate what what the exchange rate is you must back that up with your own uh, internal mechanism in the own internet this is based on the forces of demand and supply if there's too much demand for it, definitely to shoot up the exchange, the exchange, the exchange rate. So what it requires for government, uh, particularly government, to inject in a lot of capital into into the economy to make a lot of direct investment into the economy, either by encouraging foreign direct investment or by providing avenues for local business investment to to inject funds into 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 the financial sector. Sector. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's still early, it's still early, it's still early. Mm. There is no doubt that you witnessed this turbulence because what you have was a regulated approach, a controlled, a semi controlled approach. Now you have a free fall. So initially you have a free fall, mm. and when you have this free fall, then at the end of the day, Naira will find its appropriate value with the dollar. And when it finds its appropriate value, that's when we begin to know what to do in order to grow our economy. Because when you grow your economy, you grow the strength of your local currency. The exchange rate of your local currency to other currency will be boosted based on your own production capacity, based on the growth of your own local economy, based on the state of the rate of export to import. And those those are the those are the things that we ultimately increase the value the value of Naira. What we have had in the past is the arbitrary value arbitrary value of Naira, which has not helped Naira. So this will give us a true state of what Naira is and a true state of what our economy is. And it will give us the indication where we needed the right injection, the various sector that we need to improve on and then in order to grow, in order to grow our economy. Don't forget that one of the areas in which the government has spent a lot of foreign exchange and in some of us have expected that well with that policy and with um, government removing subsidy and um, at least there will be enough funds with respect to available for other people that want to utilize a foreign exchange for other businesses because the bulk of foreign exchange was going to the oil and gas sector. Now that that has been left open for everybody to come and participate in it, we expect that is what in this, this, these are just implications in the short run. In the short run, you have this type of dislocation in the economy. In the long run, we see, uh, we see what implications of what these policies, these quick fix policies that has been put in place by the Tinubu administration, what impact it has on the financial sector, and then what impact it will have on the monetary sector, and overall impact both will have on the 
on the economic sector. Yeah, but you know, good as it sounds, market forces would determine and in the long run we'll know ultimately what the real value of the Naira is. But it does sound scary, doesn't it, to think that the Naira will get to as weak as 1,000 to the dollar, doesn't it? Yeah, if, if, you, if you look at you know, the, the, um, the number of loans we took in, 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 in the last eight years, the loans we took in the last eight years for infrastructure, left, right and center, the much glorified infrastructure, you understand the implications of, 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 of those loans on our local economy and on our, for, on, 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 on our currency. And then you also look at the various policies introduced by the central bank and the various investments we have made in terms of um, changing our monetary, our monetary policy, the Naira redesign, the e Naira, you know, all of those policy, different types of policy and then policy flip for some assault does not economy requires a consistent a consistent approach a consistent policy not uh, to take 10 steps forward and then you have policy reversal i think and i hope what the tinubu administration will do will be bold bold enough to stick their guns once you have taken a decision with respect to a policy follow that policy through don't have policy some assault left right and center that itself uh, creates dislocation within the economy and it affects the value of of, of the Naira compared to other foreign, 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 foreign currency. Yeah, interestingly, in marketing the country to foreign investors, uh, one of the things that this government is saying is uh, they are assuring that policies will be stable. They won't see all these policy somersaults that have been the case in Nigeria for, for some time now. And so here we're having this analysis. And then you're talking about this, um, this uh, halting of the immediate past president's tax policies for a few months. Talk to us about that. Well, uh, uh, well uh, it's, 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 I think that um, the president and his team uh, also had also expected that the president by now should have formed his cabinet coupled with um, the the kind of pedigree he has and the kind of image that has been created for him as a consummate businessman and also a consummate politician and a renowned administrator that have built men and have built Lagos who have taught by now more than a month after his administration you have your cabinet in place because that itself also boosts the economy when you put in place your team, your economic team, your, your economic team that itself send signals, signals across the length and breadth of Nigeria and across the business community, across the international financial community and the international community that yes, we are ready for business as a of now. Uh, you have a cautious approach to governance, cautious approach to governance in the sense that the permanent secretary does not have the political, they only have the administrative power and then there's no current policy that has been formed. And Ideas are now coming from other people to help the president in shaping his economic policy or implementing whatever policy he has to that to that to that to that to that effect. So when you see some of this, what we have seen in terms of the direction of the administration has taken as stop gap measures. Stop gap measures in the sense that okay, you know what we are going to stop? We are going to stop subsidy. So what are the things that you put in place to ameliorate this the suspension of payment of subsidy or removal of subsidy payment forever. Okay, what are the measures you are putting in place to address the issue of, okay, we are floating a unified exchange, exchange with there's no more parallel market. You go to the bank, you trade, you bid for it, and the force of the market will have control over it. It's the same thing with which government has done with this various form of tax and suspension of this um, tax delayed uh, introduction of taxes on the telco tax, which was which uh, the former Minister of Communication and Digital Economy was much more interested. It, it was much more interested in um, and the one on, on cars and the one on other things. So, as far as this issue is concerned, the president needs to put his economic team in place, study what has been done in the past, and then come up with a comprehensive. Because what we are witnessing are just some few people that are close to the president and um, probably is 
recently had appointed advisors that are giving him um, the direction to what they have taken. And for me, it's still a stopgap measure. We need a full blown policy to address this issue. And this is what I tell people in public office. Whether you like it or not, you are marking time. Nobody is going to hide. You are elected for a period of four years. Mm -hmm. And then you are required. Um, since the election, the election took place in February. The winner was declared in March. Within that period, um, you should have been able to identify those that you want to run your government with. And then why, why do you think? Meeting. Why do you think it's taking him long? I mean, just as you are um, saying, I thought Emil Ocon, minute he was sworn in, he would have hit the ground running, letting us know who yeah, those um, who he's going to work you with. Do you think it has to do with him waiting for the outcome? of the cases at the tribunal? No, 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 no. I think it's one, the, the composition of the National Assembly, uh, the election of the principal officers of the National Assembly, it's, 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 it's a component part of, of, of it's, it's one of the major reasons affecting that. And then you also consider the, the complex nature, the complex nature of our society with respect to different types of interest. But I think that as the national leader, as the acclaimed national leader, of the party before you assume the presidency, he will be reigning on the whole of the party, he knows who and who he wants to, to, to relate with. And by now, we should, because that itself will help his administration, that itself will help the economy, because it will send the right signals to those. Because if I want to engage in business with the federal government now, let's say I'm a foreign direct investor, who do I relate with? Who do I relate with now? The permanent secretary? That's so a very valid question. That, <laughs> so, so it's important for him. That's why you see there's a particular story because there's, there has been a lot of speculation. Uh, there, that's why there's a particular story that we are told to ignore by uh, his special advisor on communications and strategy and special duties. Um, that we should ignore whatever list we are seeing that when the president is ready. Mm -hmm. You see, we want the president to be ready from day one. That's why you we do our election six months, almost um, four months before the before before the swearing in, mm -hmm. and then the, the winner was declared three months before before the swearing in. So by that, we should have been able to put in place the cabinet. It's very, very important. We are just counseling the president. Not every single day will be added to his tenure if, if eventually he's the certified and um, elected president by, by the Supreme Court at the end of um, this tribunal. So if he's waiting for the tribunal to decide, he's cutting short his own, his own, his own, his own tenure. Of, of presidency because uh, what you are those days will not be added to it by May 29 next year if he's still the president and he wins re-election he will swan in for a second term and if he's the president he lost the election by by next election in 2027 he 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 he, he no single day will be added to it so I tell people this tick say the clock tick tick what you have to do do quick so you are elected, you've offered to be the president, put in your cabinet, set the ball rolling, because this set the right signal. It's like you are establishing a TV station, and then you just establish this, you got the license, you said you start, you know the date of your operation, and you didn't get the needed personnel that you require to function. When we don't put up the cabinet in place, government is not functioning at 100%. That affected Buhari's administration in his first term. It took Bari almost six months before he came up with his cabinet. And that's what instructed the National Assembly, the Ninth National Assembly, to pass a bill that became an act that within the first 60 days. Yeah. And I think that there's a need for us to revisit this particular issue. Within the first 30 working days, the president and the government should be able to come up with their at least the more you delay on it, the more you have a lot of political interference. I think the president does not want to offend some people. There are a lot of interests that are battling for. For, for, for to be in the in, in the cabinet. As far as I'm concerned, you should not put former governors in this cabinet. Mm -hmm. They've been executive at the state level. At least you should look for fresh arms with fresh ideas. Those and of late, of late, that. yeah, of yeah. late, we've seen so many strategic visitations, so many strategic yeah. visitors so, so, to Aso Rock. So, so all those former governors, all these, former Senate president, yeah. former this, former that, yeah. trooping to Aso Rock. All those that have run their state at ground, that have run the economy at ground, we've seen the results. All of us are complaining about the last eight years, like we were complaining in 2015 
the last 16 years of PDP. And so we have seen the capacity and the capability of all of these elements and then get fresh hands, get square peg in square holes and round pegs in round hole and get moving. You have been elected as the president by, by the people. So you should understand that the people are waiting for the delivery of the democracy. The more, you know, we said delay is dangerous. And then in the, in, 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 in judicial palace, said justice delay is justice denied. And so in public governance, um, delay is it's denying the people what they require for survival. Just yesterday, with my analysts on the show, we're saying we hope that President Tinubu is not one who will be seeking to be politically correct, but one who will put Nigeria first and do what is needful to push the country forward. Okay, so let's move on to the Guardian newspaper. And it still carries this headline on the suspension of the, uh, the tax by the tax regime by the former president. But I think it captures it the way that you would like. Temporary relief as Tinubu defers suspends Buhari's 11th hour tax drive. This sounds more apt, captures it more aptly, right, in your opinion? Yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's just the suspension. And I think that um, to, to a large extent, guidance seems to be uh, the newspaper that um, give the readers and the audience the, the, the right perspective to the story. Um, so it's, it's just temporary suspension of what government is going to do. And like I said earlier, when you use executive order, it's a lazy approach to public policy. Mm -hmm. The right to, route to public policy is to have an enabling act. Um, if, even with this suspension, if somebody should go to court and challenge it, and the court in its way is done, sees the action, of the federal government either to be an infringement on the rights of the citizen or an infringement on what should be the responsibility of the state or the local government. I think that 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 will be that will be thrown out by the court. One of the areas which I'm hoping people will go to court is the issue of the part and then that government said is going to collect from federal government said is going to collect from market women and the rest of it. As far as Nigeria is concerned, the issue of market has nothing to do with federal government. The issue of market has nothing to do with state government. The issue of market has to do with the local government. The responsibility is the responsibility of the local government. A part of their revenue for the local government in Nigeria, from a historical point of view, based on the 1976 Dasuki reform, which was the first attempt for us to have a unified local government structure in Nigeria. Taxes are meant to be the responsibility of the local government. Even advert rates are meant to be the responsibility um, um, of the of the of the of the of the local government. Outdoor advertisement are meant to be the responsibility of the local government where they generate their revenue from. I hope that this government will live to its billing as a progressive government, as a government that believes in restructuring, as a government that challenged the overarching and overreaching attempt by federal government to take away the responsibility of the states when they were in opposition and when they were in government, that they will not fall into the same trap of which they challenge the existing power structure at the center for the overreaching taking away the responsibility of the state government and the local government. I hope, and we are waiting, and when they make such attempts, will draw attention of the public to it that well this is what these people preached some years ago but what they preach they are not practicing what they preach and if this government goes ahead to implement some of these policies and um, you just discover that some of the things they have said they have said it in the past they have just played the ostrich okay still staying with the guardian newspaper advocacy for pay on death law heightens as unclaimed funds near 1.3 trillion naira well, um, this is um, their big story. Uh, on a, yeah, yeah, on a personal note, I'll just, I'll just give you this on a personal note. Um, I lost my first wife in 2019. Um, and then I can tell you that um, even if, if not for the sake of the son, I'll have forgotten about pushing a, 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 pension, a pension fund. Um, uh, for the past four years, we've been going left, right, and center. And for you, the, the bottom line is that the moment you are dead, whether you are looking for 
your pension from government or whether your funds in the bank, um, assessing all of these funds, the, 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 the requirements that are put in place are, are, are cumbersome. That sometimes what you even expect to assess some of this fund, you just, I think that some, some way, somehow, the policy that are put in place is even to discourage you from assessing. Exactly. From assessing, from assessing, from assessing this, this particular fund. We're in a situation whereby um, what you want, you, let me, I'm just saying hypothetically, you want to collect 500,000 and you have ended up, ended up spending 350,000. You look at yourself and say, what's, what's the essence of me going through this route in order for me to assess and the time and the energy, if you cost everything, does not, does not, does not work. I think there is a need for us to, re, to review some of these laws uh, that make it very, very difficult for, 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 for people to access um, their own money. They are exactly. money. It's, 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 um, I tell, I tell, I tell, I tell people this. It's, it's, it's the same thing you experience. It's easy for the bank to collect. Look at the process with which the bank collects money from you. Mm. Look at the process with which the government collects money from you. And then look at the process you go through to collect you money. Collect your own money, money from, from the bank. From the bank. And then the process you use to collect the delivery boost of the democracy from, from the government. So, hopefully, um, there will be reforms. That that's the essence of having national assembly. That's the essence of having status of assembly. Otherwise, there won't be need for us to be to be electing new um, new members of the national assembly every four four years. Because as issues are coming, you look at those issues to address those issues in order to make life in order to make life better for the citizenry. And that's why you have elected elected representative. I hope the national assembly will look into this particular issue and the needed uh, policy trust will be provided in order to ensure that life is made at ease for for every for every nigerian indeed i join you in having that hope that the 10th national assembly will deliver and represent nigerians truly as they should this is where we'll stop off the press right now let me just let me just quickly add this um, there's this particular story on nature news uh, we know we are in the flood season it's it's a recurrent annual. It's like Florida waiting for the hurricane season, or uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, all the coastal states in America. They are fully prepared. Now, why should we wait for the season to commence before we begin to think on what to do? The it's same important. Is... And then a situation where it's a situation whereby you see the Senate. The Senate is all the federal government. I think there are a lot of illiterates in Nigeria. The federal government is made up of the judiciary, the legislature and the executive but when you talk about in this instance it might be that the senate urges the presidency the presidency symbolizes the executive the senate itself on its own by the power conferred on it can make laws to address this issue the senate and the house of rep has the power over the annual appropriation bill that talked to the annual appropriation act well once it is signed by the president and if the president refused to sign to third of the members of the National Assembly can override the president on that matter. So they can make budgetary provisions. Instead of parting the budget with juicy contracts for themselves as mm. constituency projects, they should look at this developmental project and include it in the 2024 appropriate, instead of urging the federal, it's an irresponsibility on the part of those who have given responsibility to make laws for the good of the society to be expecting the executive to execute laws that they have not made. I just want to clear add that. No, it's good you did that. I, I just didn't go to it because of time constraints, but I'm glad you did that. My analyst yesterday also touched deeply on that, saying that these are things that we should have taken care of decades ago to avoid a situation where every year we find floods taking the lives of Nigerians and destroying their properties. Thank you so much, Chief Jide Johnson, for your time again on The Breakfast. It's a pleasure to be with you, Your Majesty. Thank you for the Chief Johnson. <laughs> Chief Jide Johnson is the Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism uh, in Lagos, but he joined us this morning from Cardinal State. Okay, so we'll take a short break and come back and give you our very first hot topic on The Breakfast this morning. Do stay with us.